documentary film project Women and Children of the Industrial Revolution in Europe by Alexia Barrett. Look at this picture. What do you see and how does it make you feel? This sad image is a great representation of a terrible time in, of poverty, sickness, awful working conditions, and little to no childhood experiences like kids have today. The Industrial Revolution began in, Brit in Great Britain during the late 18th and early 19th centuries, creating a rise in factories, many being textile factories. Due to the change from hard, heavy laboring to easier to work smaller machinery, the demand for children and women workers in these factories rose dramatically. There were many reasons behind why women and children were suddenly seen working in higher numbers in textile factories. As factories started to pop up in the cities, taking the work from people who made fabric and other textiles by hand, people were forced to move to the cities to find work in mills and factories. There was a drastic drop in the demand for domestic workers such as caretakers, maids, nannies, etc., which put a lot of women out of work. While some were still able to remain in their job positions with the richest families of Britain, most women and children as young as six years old had to find jobs at factories to help the family survive. Women and children were paid a fraction of men's wages. Therefore, the factories chose to hire more of them to stay competitive in prices of goods. Children were typically paid the same amount, but at about age 16, there was a change in wage based on gender. At that point, women were paid less than men, and by age 30, they were paid one-third of a man's actual wage. The first water-powered cotton spinning mill, Cromford Mill in Derbyshire, England, in 1771 increased the demand for women workers, which were critical in the success of textile mills. The women of the Industrial Revolution were far different from the women of today. They were expected to go out, of, out to work for a fraction of the pay and a lot of times work the same hours as a man, just to come home and resume their household duties such as cooking, cleaning, and looking after the children. While this may sound similar to what many women face today, the circumstances were far different. Forced to climb under and behind the heavy and dangerous equipment, which adults couldn't do. In the mines, children were forced to climb and carry or drag heavy equipment or coal through the tiny tunnels, sometimes forcing them to stay bent down or crawl the entire way, which often resulted in injury. Both women and children worked extremely long and strenuous days, around 10 to 14 hours, with little to no breaks. This was extremely detrimental to their health because they worked and pushed their bodies for so many hours in horrific environments with little break for their body to rest and recuperate. Men were paid far more and hired in smaller numbers, so they were usually given head or supervisor positions. For many jobs, this meant they were given a room or group full of women and children and were allowed to do with them as they pleased as long as they met their quota. These men were in charge of punishment for late workers. Most of the time, these punishments were taken out on the children. Women were often not punished, but sometimes sexually harassed or worse by the men. These punishments to the cho children as young as six years old were often extremely cruel, painful, and unusual. One punishment on record for children's tardiness to work or not meeting quota was being weighted. The supervisor would tie heavy weights to the worker's neck and force them to go up and down the factory aisle to scare and act as an example to others. This is precisely why factory owners said that they like to hire children. Aside from the children begging for work, they were the perfect employees. Children were cheap, submissive, responded to punishment well, and unlikely to rebel or form unions. The factory owners got away with more than just harsh working conditions and extremely low wages for women and more specifically children. They even got away with slave-like labor of children. The owners would argue that these orphans the activists said were treated like slaves, were actually actually paid, therefore they were workers and not slaves. Owners would state 
orphans were paid in the form of food, shelter, and clothes, which was deceiving to the public. While they may have given children the necessities they described, they were all extremely low quality, cheap, and not fitting for any child. So many still argued they were treated as slaves. Child labor did not originate during the Industrial Revolution, which is a huge part of why it took so long for people to do something about the conditions and extremely young people working in these horrific industrialized places. Children had always been expected to work and earn their keep. However, before the Industrial Revolution, most children worked at home, on farms, or for the family business. The conditions they worked in were far different from the ones they experienced in factories, mills, and mines. The children may have had to work long hours, but typically they had holidays and family time off. Many breaks throughout the day and far better working environments with less dangerous duties. The first step to improving these circumstances wasn't taken until 1802 when the British Parliament pa started to pass a series of factory laws eventually called the Factory Act to help improve working conditions for women and children. The act officially passed in 1833 limited the hours children of certain ages could work. For example, ages 9 to 13 could work a maximum of 8 hours a day. Ages 14 to 18 couldn't exceed a 12-hour workday. Also, Parliament's Act stated children under nine were unable to work at all. Lastly, all children were forced to attend school for a minimum of two hours each day. All of these parts of the Act were a great step in the right direction. However, the lack of reinforcement and low fines to the factories for breaking the laws were too minimal. The laws were rarely followed. It wasn't until the Progressive Era during the late 19th century and early 20th century that child labor was finally frowned upon and less frequently used. Thanks to journalists, photographers, and other activists, the horrible work conditions and treatment for women and children had been exposed. Thank you for watching. Alexia Barrett, Movie Creator.